Hello Ride On people. So this is my uh, Klein Krios Pro helmet. My new helmet for 2021-22. Uh, and uh, I'd like to tell you the things that I like about it. The things I think uh, are not so great and how it compares against my other helmets, namely the Shui Syncrotec 2 modular and uh, more category wise, the Arai XD4. So this is uh, basically a standard helmet. I've uh, tastefully customized it <laughs> with a couple of graphics. But other than that, it's as it comes out of the box. It comes out of the box with a transition lens, a pin lock uh, insert, a clear visor if you want it, and also this uh, quick detach peak. So let's deal with some of the things I like. Firstly, I really like the way it looks. I think it's a good looking helmet. You know, when you're out in the sunshine and this uh, face shield turns jet black, as it's a transition shield, uh, it looks very cool. It looks very, very cool on any colored bike. And uh, I get a lot of uh, remarks from people saying, uh, I really like your helmet, I think it looks really cool. Uh, so I think uh, the kind of subtle graphics, if the camera will pick it up on this, uh, these bits are kind of reflective. And uh, the nice block white color, they did do it in different color ways. Uh, looks pretty good. So that's number one, I like the way it looks. Number two, how light it is. This thing is really light. It's only around three pounds. Uh, it's about 25% lighter than a Shui Hornet, for instance, lighter than a, an Arai XD4. And that's down to it being uh, two things, really. One, it being uh, pre-preg carbon fiber and uh, full shell. Um, even with the modulars, uh, the tunes tend to be plastic, but this is full carbon fiber. And then uh, the second thing is weight wise is the Kuroi uh, interior um, EPS liner. So it's kind of like green tubes or straws and um, it effectively um, kind of compresses like you imagine squeezing a, a stack of straws together, it compresses and kind of rolls the impact away from your head, hopefully. Uh, whereas an EPS liner just tends to kind of dent, as it were. Which is why they do pretty well in, you know, the traditional drop test where they're dropping a heavy object onto it and, uh, to pass the sort of DOT and uh, <coughs> ECE um, pass test, even. That's the words I'm struggling to find. Anyway, lightness, number two. That's one reason why I like it. Number three, transition lens. Mentioned it already. Don't have to mess about, feff about the internal drop down visors. Uh, this will just change uh, depending on the lighting conditions. So you go out in bright sunshine, it's nice and dark, stopping that uh, horrible glare. And uh, you get home in the dark and it's gone nice and clear. No swapping of visors, no messing about, all in one. And of course, if it's a foggy day, you've got the pin lock insert as well. So you're not getting that condensation build up on the inside of the visor. I like that. Next thing I like is this peak visor. Uh, you can take it on and off very easily. In fact, you can remove the visor and uh, the peak just by pushing this lever down and the whole thing falls off. You put it back on, turn it up a quarter of a turn, job done. No messing about screwdrivers or anything. It's a bit stiff, but uh, it works pretty well. And there's a good seal on this uh, visor, uh, which I also like as well. Uh, on a bright sunny day, when you're heading home and the sun's dropping in, you know, directly in front of you, having a peak is always nice in addition to a transition lens. You can just dip your head slightly and usually cut out the sun's glare totally. So I like that. What else do I like about this helmet? Well, I love the Fidlock uh, 
chin strap mechanism. You pull the red strap there to release it. And then when you put two sides close together within about an inch or so, uh, the magnets pull them into the right place and they lock into position. It's very, very strong. Uh, I can understand why some people would be a bit nervous about that, but um, <clears throat> Fort 9, Ryan at Fort 9, I'm sure you've watched these YouTube videos, they're brilliant. Uh, he stress tested uh, chin straps and uh, the fid lock was very close to a D lock basically. Um, and D locks are used in you know, MotoGP on helmets all over the world, etc. Uh, they did better than um, the belt straps that are used on, uh, say, like the Shui Syncrotec 2, for instance. Uh, much better, not that they were bad, they way exceeded the uh, regulatory requirements. But uh, essentially, you don't need to worry about this thing coming undone, steady as a rock, and it's so easy to do up. If you forget to do it up when you've got your gloves on, you can just, you know, just attach it, no problem whatsoever. Okay, where was I? I got interrupted. Um, Fidlock, yeah, great, great system. Uh, I'm, a, I've never had this before, but I'm a fan. Very easy to use with gloved hands, and uh, much better than faffing about with uh, a D, uh, a D lock. And once adjusted, you know, it's uh, it's good to go basically. Next thing, uh, what else can I say that I like? The ventilation is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's earth shatteringly good, um, but it's pretty good. This is a very large vent here, very easy to operate uh, with a single digit, and uh, it's a big old mouthpiece. This there's also one up in the in the forehead here. That's a nice big uh, slider, nice definite click. You know whether you've opened the vent or not. And it does fly a pretty reasonable amount of air and the choroid interior, uh, I think also helps that as well. Basically it's kind of tubes and air, so it really helps flow the air. But, you know, essentially if it's 95 degrees out, you're gonna get hot, right? It doesn't matter what you've got on your head, but in essence, I think it's pretty good. Uh, these exhaust vents at the back are fixed, uh, so you can't open and close them, but they do seem to flow the air quite well. So, uh, in terms of uh, finish, I think it's a quality finish. All the OEM graphics um, feel quite nice. They don't feel kind of raised or like they're about to fall off or anything like that. Uh, the moldings are, are, are very secure, uh, very nice flush fit. Uh, it's obviously designed extremely well uh, by somebody with a very clever computer. And, um, so I think the fit, finish and build quality feels good. This feels like a premium helmet in your hands. You know when you're, you know, when you, when you hold a premium helmet in your hand, what it feels like in terms of its fit, its finish, um, how much it flexes, all that kind of stuff. And this feels, you know, top drawer, really good stuff. Um, things that the spec sheet don't show that I like about this helmet, uh, one is the comfort. Uh, that's partly down to it being light, but also partly down to this lovely velvety uh, interior, very soft cheek pads, and uh, it's just a very nice fitting helmet. It kind of fits snugly without being too tight. It doesn't give you hamster cheeks, doesn't press anywhere annoyingly on, on your head, or at least not on mine. And um, it's a very comfortable place to be. So I like that as well. Um, and uh, finally, what else do I like about it? I think, uh, I think uh, it's relatively quiet. Um, it's, uh, sometimes you get a much uh, quieter helmet with the modular because they fit that much tighter underneath the chin. But for a full face helmet, I find this pretty quiet. It's uh, certainly not on the loud side, certainly better than, uh, you know, uh, race style helmets, which tend to be quite noisy. So let's deal with uh, some of the things that uh, I think there's a slight room for improvement or could be better. Well, uh, not really a fault of it, 
um, because uh, they will tell you in the literature that if you're going to use this as a pure road helmet, you might want to remove this uh, or not fit this peak. Sorry, I got interrupted again. And the reason why they say that is because this peak, um, when fitted, if you stop on a hot sunny day and you put your visor up, then effectively uh, your visor is no longer on direct sunlight. It's kind of shaded by the peak. In fact, in some areas it will be shaded, in some areas it won't. And then when the lights turn green and you put your visor back down, you put the face shield back down and you zoom away, what you'll find is the face shield is a bit blotchy because the areas that have uh, been shaded by the peak would have gone clear and the areas that let the sun shine through would have stayed uh, dark. And that just gives a kind of mottled effect on your visor. Now it sorts it out very quickly. Um, I don't know, for argument's sake, 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, something like that. Um, you can make it faster if it's safe to do so by kind of looking up or kind of tilting your head looking forward always look where you're going that's important but get more sunlight on it and it will transition that a little bit quicker personally i don't find it a problem and i much sooner have it because of a the cool looks uh very adventure style obviously and b uh it's nice because it blocks out a bit of sunlight when you've got it down so it don't bother me but if it bothers you know that just know that you can remove this uh, peak and then it will be a, a road style crash helmet and that transition lens will always transition uh, in a smooth and even, even way. So it's not really criticism, but it's a kind of, it's an observation if you like. Um, the other thing I would say is, I would like to see, uh, I can't show you it today, but with the lining removed, when you're fitting an intercom system, I'd like to see a few more channels where you can kind of channel the intercom wires or connectors. Now I think that's kind of like a common thing really, I would say with every crash helmet, uh, they need to do better to help accommodate that as we all like to wear our uh, intercom systems these days. Um, to be fair to them, you know, every part of protection and fit and finish you remove from the interior is arguably compromising um, safety and quality and has to be tested in different ways because you get stronger points and weaker points and yada yada yada. I'm not going to go into uh, the stress testing uh, granular details, but all I'm saying is, you know, you already put air channels in the EPS liner uh, of helmets, you know, helmet manufacturers. Just think about where we might route some of the cables uh, because I think uh, that would, uh, you know, help us all out. Um, other than that, uh, I really am struggling to find criticism of this helmet. I, I really think it's a good helmet and I really like it. Um, perhaps Klein could uh, create a modular adventure style helmet, i.e. this helmet, um, but with a, a flip up uh, mouthpiece. Now they already do the TKC 1200, uh, it's not a very good helmet in my opinion, I've owned one. Uh, transition lens is great, the lightness is great, but it really feels like an old legacy helmet from the days when they uh, acquired laser I think. And uh, it kind of feels a bit kind of, you know, a bit plasticky, a bit flexible, a bit Heath Robbins as we would say in England. Uh, whereas this, this feels very... This could be an ally in terms of fit and finish and build. And it's high praise indeed because I hold nobody in higher esteem than ally. So that's the things I love about it. The lightness, the high tech liner, uh, the comfort, the feed lock system, the transition lens, the pin lock, the breathability, uh, the looks, the fit and finish. Um, everything really, it's a very good helmet, hard to criticise that one. So how do I feel it uh, fares compared with uh, other helmets I own? So I mentioned the, um, even though it's a different type of helmet, I mentioned the uh, Shui Neotech 2 and that's a very popular helmet with many 
uh, riders of many varied motorcycles, but particularly touring, sports touring, and adventure touring. So, compared with that, I would say it's a little bit cooler because uh, the Shui is definitely hot. I would say volume-wise, you know, uh, noise-wise, pretty similar. Uh, you know, on the kind of good side of good, uh, but not blowing your socks off. Not Shubuth quiet, but equally not Shubuth uh, stifling. You don't feel that kind of claustrophobia feeling with it because you're getting some nice airflow with it. Um, I recently did um, two back-to-back 300-mile -back days in this Klein Krios Pro, followed very shortly after by three 300-mile back-to-back days in my Shui uh, Neotech 2. The things I liked about the Shui were uh, more about stopping than when going. So it was when I pulled up at traffic lights and the, the temperature, uh, outside temperature was high, it was sunny, it was nice to be able to just flip it up and get a bit of airflow. Equally, if I was going through town centre and stop start traffic, it's nice to keep keep it up, and maybe the sunshade down, so you've got eye protection, but you're getting some airflow. And again, of course, whenever you stop at um, traffic lights, uh, gas stations, it's also Sorry about that, where was I? Yeah, so the module is very practical, you know, uh, great at gas stations when you want to stop and uh, get a bit of fresh air while you're putting your card in and uh, punching the numbers in to get yourself uh, some fresh gas. And, um, you know, practical in that sense, basically. Um, and also comfort, uh, is, is pretty good with the Shui. I would say kind of liner wise, finish wise, it's as good as the, the climb, but the climb scores a bit higher because it's lighter. So after a 300 mile day, you feel like your neck and head have had, uh, you know, less of a workout as it were. So different types of helmets. Uh, there's some pros with the Shui in terms of uh, being able to flip it up at a standstill, but while going along and on the move, the climb you know, has its transition lens, it has its lightness, and uh, it's got the peak to cut out a bit of the sun. It looks much cooler, uh, it's a cool looking lid, I think. So, when stopped, uh, I take the Shui, and, and or if I'm going on a long journey in the pouring rain, and I don't want to take my helmet off, at gas stations and things like that, I take Shui. But a um, long ride on a nice sunny day, uh, whether it's summer or winter, uh, but particularly winter when the temperatures are cooler, I take the climb for sure. Now let's compare it with the Daddy, uh, as most people would see it, the Arai XD4. Now I own an Arai XD4. I find my one is a bit tight on my head and so I don't wear it that often. Um, whereas this climb gives me a lot more room around my ears, which is where it's particularly tight on the Arai. Problem I have with the Arai is when I put speakers in it for the intercom, it hurts my ears, it's way too, too tight on my head. Whereas with the climb, uh, strangely, I've just had to move the speakers outwards because the sound was a little bit too quiet even when turned up on my intercom. Um, because I think they were just a little bit too far away. I think with the uh, Cardo Pactor Bold Black uh, kit, you know, the actual original kit you buy, you get the bigger 45mm JBL speakers, they're a little bit louder. With the kind of plugging, plug and play kits, uh, kind of for a second helmet if you like, I think you get the, the regular 40mm speakers and they're not quite as good. Not quite as loud so I actually had to move mine out a bit <coughs> but that highlights that I have more room um, in the helmet to do that and so uh, in terms of fitting an intercom and it fitting your head comfortably afterwards I would say the Klein has it over the Arai. In terms of quietness they're both very similar 
In terms of airflow, I would give it to the climb over the Arai. In terms of uh, ultimate strength, in a crash, <coughs> I think time will tell because I think a few people have to go down the road and uh, smash their noggin against the kerb or two in the climbs with the choroid interior to see how well they stand up to some true real world abuse rather than a, you know, a test rig in a, you know, lab somewhere. Um, but Arai is obviously proven in that respect. Uh, in my opinion, if uh, bike racers never got paid sponsorship for wearing their helmets, I think you'd see the entire grid of MotoGP probably wearing an Arai because ultimately, um, if you want ultimate protection, um, that's really hard to be an Arai. They're effectively handmade by you know, up to 100 workers touch an Arai helmet before it gets put in the box and what you buy in the box is exactly what they wear on the grid. So in terms of ultimate strength, I'd have to give it to Arai, but there's a big caveat there. The climb is, you know, super light. It's full carbon fiber, not just fiberglass or a composite. Um, it's proper pre-preg. It's got the choroid liner, which I believe I'm comfortable uh, putting my head in it, believing that it's as good, if not better, than uh, a traditional polystyrene EPS liner. And uh, you know, that's saying something because I'm the person that's always saying, "Yeah, you can survive without an arm and a leg, but you try surviving without your head." You know, if, as Bell once very famously said, you know, if you've got a $10 head, wear a $10 helmet. I've always bought the most expensive and, and usually the safest helmet that I could uh, afford. And typically that's always led me to, uh, you know, sometimes AGV, but particularly Shui and particularly Aoi. Uh, this is the first non Shui Aoi that I would put up in that league, that I would say, Hands down for sure. Somebody showed me this as a clean sheet design with no graphics on it and asked me who built it. I'll be saying one of the Japanese built this helmet. It's that good. So ultimately, uh, quick question time. I'm sure I will get asked this if I don't answer it. If I didn't have a helmet today, which would I buy? The Arai XD4, the Klein Krios Pro, or the Shui Synchrotec 2. It's a tough question because I've always, always said, um, once you live with a modular helmet, there's no going back, and uh, you'll always want a modular just on practicality reasons alone. So that is very difficult to ignore. Uh, but equally, uh, the climb has some unique pros over that. It has the, you know, it has the choroid liner, it has the fidlock system, it has the transition lens, it has full carbon fiber construction, so it's very light, very comfortable. There's better comfort, there's better air airflow probably, and um, may well be more protected. And they're big pros, so. It's a really tough call. I think uh, I think I'd probably go with the climb. I'd have the restriction of not being able to lift up the front, but I just think it's better tech. Uh, it feels like next level. I'm sure sooner or later, either climb himself will do a modular version of this, or somebody will do something. Uh, uh, you know, how I uh, sure you will do a modular uh, game with some of these features and. You know, that will then raise that game again. Of course, if Arai made a modular, wow, I think they could pre sell a million. I'd buy one without even looking, uh, you know, without even having to see it, you know, see what it's like. I would just say, take my money. But they don't, and they like to do things their own way, like they don't like internal wires, uh, sun visors, sun shades, because they think it compromises shell uh, quality, for instance. And I kind of, you know, in some ways I kind of support that, you know, one quality standard, no compromise, 
It's not about sales, it's about making the ultimate protective product. But then I also think a bit like kind of Toyota being caught with their pants down with everyone moving to EVs and then having their heads in the sand. I kind of think Arai could realize that technology uh, improvements in the last 50, 60 years have meant that they could definitely make a very safe modular helmet. <coughs> and if they were so obsessed with uh, safety, why do they offer open face helmets? It's a good question, isn't it? So I would say I would hands down personally have the Krios Pro over the Arai XD4. I'd have it over the Hornet uh, Shoei. And I'd probably have it over the Syncretech, Syncre uh, is it Syncretech? Neotech. It's one of those, I have both of those. Um, Syncretech, I think, too. Um, it's just a very thoroughly well-designed helmet. Very difficult to get right now. Usually on back order with everybody. Hard to get in the popular sizes like large. I think it's a cracking looking helmet. It looks cool as. It's light, it's comfortable, it's safe, it's practical. In short, if you have an adventure biking 2021, 2022, the Klein Krios Pro is what you want on your head. Ride often, ride carefully, ride on. And the reason why they say that is when you have the peak fitted, sorry. Nope. <laughs> Safety cat. Cougar. Never own a cat. It always ends badly.